Hi there, everybody, and welcome to another video here on uh, VEG TV. Today, we're going to take a peek at this Radio Shack or Realistic 12 625 AM FM radio. This is going to be part one. Part one, we're just going to preview it, and it'll become very obvious what part two is going to be. Had this radio a while now, and it's a an okay radio. It gets all your local channels okay. It's not that great in DX. I mean, kind of, sort of, it's okay, but not good. I'm suspecting that we can easily remedy that to make it even better. It's not one of my radios that I reach for for DXing. If I happen to get a, a, lo a long distance channel, then fantastic. If not, out of this radio, I'm expecting nothing. It's one of those radios. On the front here, you can see we have a really nice big display. Very easy to see. I do like the fact that the background is a lighter color and the numbers are dark. I do have some radios that are just quite the opposite. And it makes it really hard to, to see where you're at without a, brow, uh, without a bright light illuminating the screen. This one, as I said, very easy. Nice big pointer dial here and a log that goes the entire width of the uh, display. We have this really nice big speaker grill to illuminate that very big speaker in there and the chrome dome that's on it. A very large volume on off control which I, I appreciate. Makes it very easy to control. I don't like volume controls or tuning controls that are this small and it, it makes it really hard to control the radio. I mean, it's great if you're just turning the radio on, putting it on the channel, done. But if you're into, you know, playing with the radio, DXing, whatnot, you need that big control to control the radio better. And so this one definitely meets that category. I think to a degree, it was well thought out on its layout. We have a AFC slider switch. And this switch here is your band selector AM and FM and then we have our tone control which is a actual rotatable knob on this side we have Nothing but these really cool riblets. I think maybe you could also use this as a washboard. Or a musical instrument. The handle, really nice and big. Comfortable, easy. And it stays where you position it. So that's really cool. On this side we have the big probably about the same size as your volume control tuning knob and here we have our earphone and our favorite rock band or power selector I don't know about that AC DC group though but I do enjoy DC AC on the back here we have a couple of vent holes to allow that bass dumping sound to come out and breathe and all that good stuff I don't know maybe this is three to one and we got our left and right here and then in the front our big subwoofer that's what i'm thinking we have our battery bay door and then we have our sticker and our ul sticker hey jack let's take a closer peek at these stickers shall we okay you bet here we go and there you go read that and weep are you done weeping all right let's move on to the next one anybody know what ul stands for you're wrong. Let me tell you what it stands for. It stands for you like. You like radio receiver, no? See? Lame, I know. <laughs> and rounding the tour off, up top here you see we have a top loading aerial. As you see it does not fit flush or sit flush. So we had that little bump right there. Could be a catch-all. And as you see, it does have a, a, uh, a ball on there, swivel ball. The antenna is about 18 inches long, give or take. We're going to go ahead and do a quick tour uh, of the radio uh, band scan. 
And as I stated, this is the point where it's going to become obvious what, what's all needed. Here we go. We're on FM. And as you see, the antenna is down. don't know is not so much. AM. Stone that I thought was a good one for most Christians. Created man for incorruption. And Levante otros tres dedos. Oh, uh, be extra careful heading through. More details at in the first round. I have to tell you, full disclosure, this was on uh, batteries, that test that we just did on batteries. I don't know how old those batteries are. They've been in there for as long as I've owned this radio, and um, they, they actually came with the radio. Not sure how old they are. Don't even know what brand they are. Oh, Duracell. And I'm not seeing, oh, March of 2013. 
So a little old. Oops. <laughs> you you heard this radio playing, right? Interesting. So I guess it's a good thing I did. Oh, this one is older. I guess it's a good thing I decided to work on this uh, radio. In uh, part two, uh, fire up the voltometer and we'll take a uh, voltage reading of that and see what we actually get if any uh, I mean we have to have something right the radio is playing all right so we got the same story there 2003 so we got a little goo on that You can see a little corrosion on that terminal, so we'll have to clean that off. And luckily, nothing on that terminal. So, just caught it in the nick of time. My other complaint about this was going to be that I noticed that it, it drifts somewhat. Probably because of those batteries that made this radio drift, and it could also be the reason why maybe this radio is not that big of a performer because of those batteries. It will definitely be interesting to see. I guess all I have to do is just, I don't know, plug it into power to confirm that. I'll do that between uh, take two, I'm sorry, between this part and part two, I'll go ahead and do a band scan and see what happens and then I'll, I'll let you know. Anyway, that does it for part one of the introduction and we'll meet you back in part two where we'll actually start ripping and tearing and tweaking and peeking from your favorite pencil neck geeking. All right, we'll catch you there.